Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Will. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Um, as always, we're still socially distanced. We did it before it was mandated. Uh, Kansas, Connecticut, New York, Virginia. Virginia. That's right. Yeah. Damn it. You even sent a note about it and I forgot it. <laughs> To me, everything over there is basically two hours away, so I just assume you're all together. That is so far from the truth. <laughs> it's closer now than it was, considering there's no traffic. But well, this is actually, true. Everything's really, like is two true. and a half hours away, right? Things that used to be two hours are like 45 minutes now. <laughs> well, it's like LA traffic, where it's like you're only going to go seven miles, but it's going to take you three hours. Yeah, That's exactly. how it usually is. Like I've done some trips down to Delaware and Maryland that have taken like close to nine hours oh, and easy. it's supposed yeah. to take like four three yeah. and you i was know. going through connecticut to a wedding and every exit where traffic merged you would just mm-hmm. stop and then 95 or merit 95. yeah then yeah wait and then the next exit would be more traffic and you'd stop again mm-hmm. yeah i was i was yep <laughs> cursing uh connecticut that day <laughs> wait you went to a wedding in connecticut no, north of connecticut so we had to get through connecticut to get there oh, oh, oh. okay yeah. And then, it's not like you can swing west and go around it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 95, 95, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or you go up to Massachusetts and take Mass Pike and then hate yourself even more. <laughs> well, that was when I lived in Florida. Like, there was only – you had 75 was your only chance to go north and south. Or you could hop onto 41, but it literally was a light every 17 feet. So <laughs> it was the lesser of two evils most days, so. You can choose your battles. Turns out we're going to be a traffic podcast now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Today on We Complain About Traffic. Yeah, let's talk about something that's not existing right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Traffic doesn't exist, but the Bronco finally does. It does. Segue Ooh. directly okay. into it. Well, it does in theory for you and me. Will's actually seen the thing. He t- which, touched it. Touched touched it. it. Not, yeah, I've not washed my hands since. <laughs> <laughs> all, Did your... Did your, that's all. <laughs> did your Jeep like shrivel up when you got back in it after you touched the Bronco? Uh, as soon as I plugged my iPhone in, it said this accessory is not uh, a... No, know, it didn't. Did it really? Or whatever. Literally as I got in the car. Oh my God, yeah. that's amazing. And I, was, I, was, I was kind of looking around like, wait. <laughs> How do you know you're not that smart? You're just a JK. <laughs> yeah. But then the next day I bought um, a bikini top uh, for it. Nice. So hopefully that'll, it's laid out across the floor over here. So hopefully that'll... Very nice. Feel a little bit better. My my wife is is not on board with this Bronco thing, so she's sending me like Jeep mods. Figuring the more money we spend on it, the more likely we'll just be like, oh well, we spend money on it, might as well keep it. I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, I'm gonna. I figure I'm gonna just take both paths for a little while and see. What right. Happens. So follow up question to the bikini top: yeah. How much of a contraption is it, and difficulty of install does it look like? Like. Um, the instructions aren't very clear. Um, I've got a big, <laughs> big Mac monitor. I would like lean it over. Um, but I, the instructions are not very clear. The videos I haven't watched are not very clear. Um, there's a bunch of... Oh, it, it's going to be yeah, a trial by fire. Traps and things. Um, I've never actually... Um, I haven't taken the hard top off very often. So you need to take that off. And then I think once I get this on, it, it rolls back and then straps. And so you can get oh. the lean on. So then if I take the hard top off again, it's just always there, which is, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's a best top. It's made of the same stuff they make the regular soft top out of. So in theory, it's relatively water resistant, at least in the front, you know. So the front two sections will stay pretty covered. So Wait, okay, so it stays on underneath the hard top? I think so. I'm so it, it's yeah, like it, it added like a, insulation. A yeah, it's a header channel at the front that snap, that clips on. And then I think you can roll it back and strap it by the one of the, the, the sport bars that have the speakers. And then uh, I think it just exists there. Take the hard top off, and then you can drive around with, with the kind of like the uh, the cover pulled back, essentially. And then Design. If it rains, just unroll it and snap it on. But we'll see. Hope for goes. the best. Yeah. So anyways, Bronco. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, we're always willing to talk something. Just yeah, we'll, we'll we'll hear we'll uh, after we the, discuss Bronco, Will can talk about kind of a podcast okay. talking about yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's how we uh, how we get our content. So, uh, I mean, it finally debuted. It it's it's actually nice to that we haven't done this the next day because we could all overcome from our actual off road hangover there and 
and actually digest some of the information. The more I've read, the more I've been impressed. There's also been a few things that have come out since last Monday night that were not as impressive. There's one specific thing I'm talking about and we can get there, but. You want to start there? Is that the sure. transmission not being avail- it is. available so they, with Sasquatch? They have a Sasquatch package, which is, you know, supposed to be the best off-road kit, 35s, blah, blah, blah. And you can't get the stick with it, which, yes, we all know that off-roading with an auto is easier and at this point better than off-roading with a stick, but... You want the option. Yeah, you can get a Rubicon with a stick still. Yeah. yeah. The, fact, the fact that it's not an option is a bit of a downside, but I'm sure Ford looked at how many automatic Wranglers are sold and went, all right, <laughs> this is most, easy. most, if not yeah. almost all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, my O4 TJ was a manual and it was fine, but I've, I've driven JKUs with automatics and they were just as good. <laughs> like it, it's kind of nice not to have to shift for a little bit. That, I mean, a Jeep manuals, it's okay, but like, it, it's not like I'm sitting there shifting, going, "That was so great." No, it's yeah, terrible. There's nothing specifically sporty about it. Like when you're in a low gear and you want to like really ride out first gear and you know control where you're going, makes sense. But daily driving, like, I don't, I haven't missed it. Mm-hmm. The first time I haven't had a manual in a while, and man, you know. And, the Broncos manual is going to be a seven speed manual. Yeah. Seven. Which now we've only seen in Porsche in the nine eleven and in the C seven Corvette. And otherwise there has not did Aston Martin have a seven speed? I don't think so. I think, manual, I don't think so. No? Manual. so okay, so then there's only been two like quote unquote major production seven speeds. Yeah. And they're on vehicles that I, I mean, I think I've probably seen two total you know um well and it's and it, that seven speed manual only comes with the four cylinder ego boost you can't get it with a, a 2.7 v6 which, which is uh, i don't know <laughs> i'm sure people go ahead will i was say 2.3 is a good engine just having you know experienced it in some other cars um it's still it makes it be i, I like that the manual is available in the, in the smaller engine just because it'll make the smaller engine more fun but taking away the option to have the fun in the larger engine as well is kind of kind of a bummer yeah it's kind of silly the opposite of what we're seeing with a lot of companies like i know mazda you can only get the stick if you get like the pre- or premium or premier yeah. package or something at the very top of the mazda 3 so yeah. on bronco it's like it's, it's such a double-edged sword you know you can't get the best off-road crap but you can get a stick on like a base level vehicle, which is kind of actually not, I'm saying it out loud. It's kind of how it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be the old school that like, you know, all base models came with a a manual. Right. Cost you a thousand bucks to upgrade. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. It's old as new again. (laughs) And that's how we have a Bronco. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) It makes sense that this is the model they did it on. So yeah. Yeah. Base price of the two door. 29.9 Twenty nine nine is what I've seen. I haven't mm-hmm. seen. Yep. Is that four is like thirty two ish? Uh, almost thirty five. Yeah, it's it's up. Or something. So yeah. I think a JLU Wrangler Sport is like thirty one. So what's interesting is the base two door is competitively priced against the two door Jeep and the four door Jeep, but the four door Bronco. Is technically starts higher than the base four door Jeep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I paid about thirty five for mine, but mine's a big bear edition or whatever. So it was one of the hundreds of you know, <laughs> nothing to do with a gay club. But um, <laughs> oh man, oh I've never put two and two together on that. Dude, we could get you bear. some sweet oh, yeah. stickers. <laughs> oh, I could. Yeah. I could yeah. <laughs> I'm a big bear. <laughs> um, big bear. Not work, like but, that. Yeah. I think I paid about 35 stickers, probably closer to 40 just because of discounts and things. Probably. Um, finding a used one to two year old unlimited is easy, but they're all expensive. Like most of them are still. They're like one or 2% off down. sticker. Yeah, yeah. They were mid thirties for most of them. I mean, that might've got me a Rubicon used, but yeah, just, and the, you know, it was, it was impressive how, how well they hold the value. So. 
<laughs> I still have not heard from the Ford dealer to find out what my trade-in offer is going to be. So mm -hmm. I told him what I owed as a 26 something. And uh, my guess is he's already looked at how far off that is and doesn't want right. to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't got your call back yet. Exactly. No, but interestingly, my dad today texted me and said something about something to the effect of, I'm curious to see what the Bronco values are like one to two years after production starts, like, like an off lease or, you know, an early trade. It's like, I think they're probably going to hold their value really well. I have to wonder like, what makes the Wrangler hold its value so well. It's usually like in the top two or three near the Tacoma. You know, yeah. Others. That and taco are like, yeah, the, all the time. yeah it, that's probably number one. Jeep's usually number two, the Wrangler. I don't know. I don't know specifically why. If you look at the factors that the Jeep has almost until now, no other car vehicles really had, is that why they hold their value so well? If that's mm -hmm. the case, then the Bronco should as well. But Like perceived value of something you can't get in any other vehicle. Yeah, four-door convertible, off-road right. ability, relatively comfortable daily driver, Yep, shaped like a brick. But... And brand cachet. <laughs> True. So yeah. to, the, to the relatively comfortable part, Bronco doesn't have a solid front axle. It doesn't. It doesn't, which is in line with, first of all, the Sequoia, when I almost got a mm -hmm. freaking art shouting match on the internet with that guy for no reason because. Who? Oh, well, don't answer that question. It was, um, it was not a specific why? individual who I know. Because somebody said, like, if you had an opportunity here, like, what vehicle would you put this specific thing on? And I said, well, I'd put it on the Sequoia because I'm not paying a tax on a Forerunner. I'm not paying a tax mm -hmm. on a Linkers. I'm not paying a Jeep tax. Like, I can get into this model of vehicle fairly cheap. I can surrap this thing on it and I can go be very capable. And some guy was like, well, it's got an independent front suspension. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, which means it's comfortable. Right. I'm still going to be able to do 80% of what anything with a solid front axle can do. Defender now has yeah. IFS. Bronco and has IFS. Just straight air suspension. And FJ had IFS, don't forget. So does yeah. like, yeah. like Brands have experience with independent front suspension. Like, but Ford's comment to it was they wanted to make it capable off road, but the knock on the Wrangler all the time is on road manners aren't great. They're, they're fine. There. They're much better in the JK than they were in the TJ. Yep. Yeah. And they're insanely better, supposedly, in the JL than the JK. Uh, JL is good. I was in a JL the same on this last road trip <clears throat> and, uh, in San Antonio. We took it from their house downtown and it was. Even on lifted with bigger tires, it was definitely smoother than my car. Mm. Um, the issue with the JK is it just gets so unsettled on the highway. On, like occasionally, it would it'll get so unsettled that the traction control light pops on because really? the, the tires spun enough, <clears throat> which meant I got a little bit of air. Yeah, and the traction control comes on. We're going through Kansas, and we um, one Wind? of the tires got enough uh, got enough spin to turn the traction control on. And the whole thing just went. Mm. That's so fucking terrifying. Like, oh, shit. Was so, it super windy? Like crazy it, crosswinds? It was, but it, we just hit a bump and it just skittered just lightened around. the truck a little bit. Yeah. My God, I'd shit my pants. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't like highway, it doesn't like highway bumps or those grates on bridges where you kind of, you know, it mm -hmm. just it starts tracking on one and it takes off onto a different one and it'll it dirt. take you over half a yeah. lane sometimes. So yeah. even so, the compare IFS that to into the Broncos to fix. That kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it should be a little more aerodynamic with the more of a rigged windshield and. You know. But just just to back up real quick, the IFS, the only detriment off road is like at the limit articulation. You know the huge difference in uh, like a you know a seven out of ten trail is where you'll see it, but other than that, like. <laughs> which most owners don't really experience. <laughs> no, no, very small percentage. And also, like, the flex from a well-set-up IFS is totally fine. Well, and lockers. Also like, lockers. Lockers can help. If you, if you are limited on your, on your flex and your reach, having lockers will help mm -hmm. alleviate some of that. And crazy sway bar. Which that all, – all of these things are also all available on the Bronco. Yeah. So – they, it, it's like they made conscious decisions to better the vehicle for what it'll be used for. Well, it's eighty percent of the time, yeah, ninety, yeah. 90. far and beyond. I mean, it gets into like perceived off-road ability versus actual, and you 
relative buyer's interest in being able to go off road. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I wonder how many Jeep owners and buyers really know the full like capability either from their own experience or from YouTube or something. It's well, gotta be 2% or some crazy low number. Low, yeah. My, my favorite part of the, one of the articles I was reading, I'll see if I got, I got to get up here. And they were talking about, um, was it suspension setup? It's on Jalopnik. Um, but they were talking about the basic foundation of the, uh, even the JL suspension is from an 84 Cherokee. What now? The, the Quadra link. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's still under that's... the JL. Like they haven't gone completely different. So you're looking at suspension that was designed in the early eighties. It's right. not bad. It's good. Right. I mean, we, don't forget Mustang is only five years out from, <laughs> from leaving, you know, a solid uh, rear axle. axle. Behind. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> anyways, I just want to back up about a minute. Uh, Will, you said the windshield is more raked yeah. than Wrangler and you saw this thing in person. Yeah. So does that give it like a lot them to that the side windows look really small in the pictures um i'll start with the first one um no on the on the windshield rake i don't know what the, the degree is on the on the bronco we know the jl went slightly further back than the jk and it you know improved miles per gallon a little bit uh, along with you know new engines and stuff um i didn't get a sense that the bronco felt much more raked but as you stand there and look straight down you could tell just having just you know spent two weeks in mine and i think uh um, you might appreciate this. I killed every bug in Kansas one night going through there. <laughs> Thank you. It was just covered. In, splat. <laughs> yeah, it was one after another. It sounded like it was raining at one point. So the, the one in mine is, is pretty upright. Uh, it's like that meme that's like, just remember that JK is less aerodynamic than a cow. And it shows the little. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Forgot about that one. So the JL is, is definitely better than the JK. And I get the sense uh, not having anything mathematic to back this up that the Bronco is probably a little further back than that. Mm -hmm. but it doesn't really change, um, change the look that much. Um, the side window issue, um, it was interesting because the doors were off, the top was off. So it's hard to get like a in the car perspective. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in it and you can't really like look left or right and get a sense of where oh, your reference points are kind of gone are compared yeah. to your shoulder or whatever. Yep. Um, and same thing. I didn't sit in the back. Um, so it's kind of hard, mm -hmm. especially with the top off, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell what that right talking like, you know, does it feel like a Camaro or does it feel like a, exactly. You know? Um, so yeah, good, good question. I, it was, it was kind of hard to tell with the, okay. Everything, everything taken off. Guess we'll have to wait until we can actually just line them up literally parked next to each other. Assume that'll be motor trend. <laughs> Get <them> Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> they'll, they'll both be long termers too. Right. Yeah. So we can ask Jeff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, now Jeff's getting that <laughs> motor yeah, trend money. True. <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> so could you, the one you saw was on, they had the 35s, right? It did, yeah. It had the did, it, did it look drastically taller? Because they're, they're listing like almost, 11 and a half inches of ground clearance it was pretty beefy like it it was i asked the rep if i could park my jeep next to it and he laughed and was shaking his head and i was like oh this is gonna be great and then he's like no. oh no i pulled around the back of the trailer as i was leaving and he couldn't see me and i sort of got out and took a quick picture um it feels big like it like, felt substantial yeah, like yeah the, the I've got step boards on mine that I got as a, uh, a gift. This is where I tested whether my wife is watching. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she got them for herself to get into it or ah. for the kids um, because I'm six foot. I just sort of step into my Jeep. It's not lifted. Um, but getting in and out of the Jeep definitely felt a little lower than getting in and out of the Sasquatch equipped Bronco. So mm -hmm. Again, completely non-scientific approach of just <laughs> my butt hit the side of the seat. I had to sort of push up to get onto it a little bit. So mm -hmm. the butt measurement the system. This yeah, tire, right. There's tires, uh, there's Wrangler tires they look huge. <laughs> the Wrangler tires that they are not yeah. stamping the word Wrangler on. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? I went back and looked at the pictures I took and it does say the, it's got manufacturer name on both sides instead of Wrangler. Just really? Good year, good year. <laughs> yep. Or light year, light year. Definitely. Light year, light year. Light beer, light beer. Good year, now the worst. <laughs> That's funny. 
<laughs> that's terrible that's, year. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, true that. So, okay, what else can we talk about? I mean, Ford's touting, you know, absolute best crawl ratio and then absolute best ground clearance versus Wrangler in all comparable trims. Um, same for breakover and departure. And I put a link in here. Motor Trend did a pretty interesting breakdown. Like, some of those measurements come down to like a tenth of an inch, you mm-hmm. know. It's it's really close, and that's for like a Sasquatch equipped Bronco. Yeah. So they definitely, you know how when Toyota and BMW were developing the Z4 and the Supra, they took a Cayman and a Boxer, and you know took wheelbase and took all these other things and said yeah. we're going to try to match this or, or better it. I feel like there was a little bit of that going on. It was like I'm sure, yeah, not you know armchair like bench racing or anything, but kind of. Yeah. They bit, knew yeah. that they had to and like, good. Awesome. Happy to see that. But at the same time, you know, two tenths of an inch is, I mean, the well, joke's right. The joke's right. There, so. One, you have one vehicle to beat. And I, when I was in Texas, uh, I was hanging out with my friend with a JL and he was completely <laughs> interested in the Bronco. And I was, he's like, well, what do you think? What are you expecting? Cause this was a few, you know, maybe a week before it came out. And I said, I guarantee you based on Ford's resources and, you know, think of, you know, think of Ford versus Ferrari, like, you know, this is the, you have a very specific thing to engineer to beat this thing. And like you were just saying, Ross, like they, they made sure that like every little, t- every little tick they could do of like advantage, it'd be, you know, in that little mm-hmm. section that you'll see at some point where it compares the two that, you know, from the Ford website, they'll show every little measurement and thing that's, that's better. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, there's been a bunch of interesting examples of where like you have one car to beat and you either do it or don't do it. Like, you know, it's it's kind of funny. Yeah, there's been a lot of those where they don't actually beat the other car. No, the, <laughs> um, the Mercury Marauder when it came out, it literally just had to beat the um, the uh, the Chevy um, Impala, Impala SS. Impala. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was slower. And I was like, come on, right. <laughs> it's like, come on, Ford, like this is the one car you're going to get compared against right away, and it was slower. I was like, all right. <laughs> so like, in, these things are so badass, though. They're oh, yeah, still good, yeah. The the only engine that has more horsepower than the two point three EcoBoost is the V six in the Jeep, which only betters the Pentastar. It's yeah, on, it's on horsepower. Yeah. So the the horse the Pentastar is going well, and the three ninety two is only a concept. <laughs> a quote unquote. I mean, that's like you got shit. We've seen this how many times over the years with FCA. Tons. It's just a concept. Oh, yeah. Put a V8 in it, and then that shows up. I mean, yeah, the, the, the concept of reality, and that's pretty pretty easy. Scary as hell, but it's easy. <laughs> yeah. Somebody somebody quoted, like, should I be happy with something that's zero to 60 in five seconds in a G? Yeah, right. Like, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. What's scarier? Theoretical $70,000. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. <laughs> somebody who's never had any performance experience before walking into a Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealership with 70 grand in their pocket and they buy a Hellcat or they buy a 485 horsepower Wrangler. What's scarier? Oh God, the Wrangler! Just because it's gonna be <laughs> so <laughs> right. It's it's like a wrecking ball. <laughs> I, 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 I'm continually impressed. I wouldn't consider my car fast as like an enthusiast, but I mean, at one point through the middle of nowhere America, I think we hit like 110 at one point. Like not really trying that hard. We were going downhill, but it was. I just kind of you know maybe it was a tailwind downhill. <laughs> but the fact that it's something that shaped, that. It's shaped like that can. I mean, it'll, I mean, it'll hit a hundred, like not even. Yeah. The Pentastar. Imagine having that power behind it. Like that's insane. It's nuts. <laughs> I hope they have a limiter of some sort. On the There's speed. been a lot of shit talking around the Pentastar recently about how it's like quote unquote long in the tooth, but it's actually like still a totally good engine. Dude. How long did they have a four liter? The straight like, six. <laughs> yeah. Like I have no uh, issues with the. The Pentastar has been around for what? Forever. 10 years? Uh, 2012, 11? 12-ish, yeah, something like the, that. Oh, like yeah. 2012, JK. 12 was and JK. They had, they had some used, uh, there's a couple of used Wranglers sitting around, and they, the, the, the dealer was like, they all have the old engine, it's crap, the new one's way better, and I'm, I've been pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's the a, three it's a was giant it. horsepower jump. Because yeah. they were like 202, and all of a sudden they were like, 276 or something yeah something yeah. like that like it was, isn't is it 285 matter. now yeah it's 285 now 
think so. Yeah, that's strong. Think mine's two seventy something. Yeah. yeah, that's strong. I don't know. I don't know. What else can we? Uh, yeah. What else, I, what else do you want to know about the Bronco? I think the two seven is going to be a freaking blast in the Bronco. Probably. I think that I drove it in the the Edge ST. Mm-hmm. Yep. It was it was delightful. Now it was in Arizona and. Ford put me in a fancy hotel for a night, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it was a hotel that I did not belong in. Like I walked in, I was like, Ooh, I'm not douchey enough for this place. It's not, right. <laughs> not good. Um, yeah. But it was like Scottsdale. So it made sense. Uh, Mine's up. But like right. that edge and with that engine just blasting along the highway was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And if they can actually. Is that the one put, in the Explorer or is that the 3.5? The Explorer, the, I think, is still the three five. Yeah, okay. for, the the for the ST, I yeah. think you get the base one with the two seven. Okay. Yeah. Or the three seven, uh, just V six. Like that thing's not dead yeah. yet. Like no, that's, crazy. Talk about yeah. old. Um, and it makes three hundred horsepower though. Like. True. I remember when the the fifth gen Mustang when they dropped that yeah. in, and everybody was like, "Wait a minute, three hundred horsepower from a what?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the four yeah. six was making that until like two thousand ten. Uh, I bought a 2010 Mustang. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. And I, also, oh. I, was, I also bought a 2011 Mustang. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, pretty quickly after that. <laughs> Big job. As a car Big guy, job. I wasn't fully into the journalist stuff at that point, but I was like, like way into like the forums and like I was mm-hmm. like I was far into it. And I actually went on Google to see the first time that the 2011 like 5.0 information came out. And I was like, I should have seen that. Should have. Oh, should have noticed, me. dude. I had the same thing. I bought a Challenger RT, a leftover Challenger RT. You know, with the five seven, like four days before they Ooh. released the 2015 with the the six yeah. four. It's like I'm buying the 5.7 liter um, um, GTO. You know. Oh God, yeah. yeah. And then they dropped the six L, six L, like an LS one C six Corvette. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Cry yeah. yourself to sleep. Yeah, I, I, knew, I knew somebody that bought the five point seven, and he was he made excuses each day of like why it was fine, but it wasn't fine. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't I, fine. I have to drop an image <laughs> of a GTO into the chat to you guys right now because <laughs> it is one of the most ugly cars ever, and it's. I hope it's you're a talking GTO. about the specific one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a very specific car. Let's see if it'll actually paste into the chat here. If oh, not, I'll drop it in Slack. I started thinking of the GTO this week for some reason. Maybe I saw one and was like surprised to see one. I don't know. They're not around Come much. On. Slack will work. Bam. It's in Slack now. It's uh, in Slack now. Okay. It, so it is just horrible. Oh. Oh. It looks like a spiker. <laughs> in the it does. It doesn't <laughs> not look like a spiker. You're right. From if you just if you just hold hold your finger over the the the, the front of it. So the, the front of it is very bird-like. It's very uh, pointy nose, but like it has these giant horrible wheels. The windshield's wi- uh, frameless around the outside. I drove this car. I knew the owner. Uh, you drove this fucking thing? Oh, I my drove this God. Thing. Was it, your head above everything, including uh, the windshield yes, frame? Like the, I had bug strikes on my forehead. Like the, wind, oh, the windshield terrifying. was not doing a good enough job. No, negative. Uh, <laughs> Everybody looks at you in this car, though, because they're like, every, every time they're like, what the hell is that? That does not. That's, uh, they're waiting for it to go. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't you just buy an SSR? It's got the same drivetrain and looks almost better. Because this was a George Barris car. Uh, designed on a napkin, 30-day build. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> 90 grand. Nine Ooh. zero. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Yeah, huh. um, okay. fairly certain it was sold for forty. <laughs> that's a wet noodle car. If I ever saw one, it is terrible. Uh, but Anyways. it made it made almost good noises because it's a GM powertrain. So was it a five seven or a six zero? It was a five seven. That's why I was like, so not only does it look horrendous, it's not even the you have the worst engine. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Um, so speaking of power and performance the one thing i haven't seen for bronco is weight i was wondering that that's there's a couple things you're going to get out of that one is obviously performance but or like you know zero to 60 etc mm-hmm. but uh i think the mile per gallon is really going to tell the story because there's a bunch of engines that are already out there in the, that eco boost format with those mm-hmm. two engines 
and you can kind of look at what they're in and kind of guess maybe mile per gallon, maybe a little worse with the windshield upright. But right. I mean, coming from a Wrangler, that would I'm not super mile per gallon focused, but I imagine some people don't get a Wrangler because they look at the the mm-hmm. teens mile per gallon. You know, how do you do with yours? Uh, on this trip, at least if the computer was accurate, I didn't do any uh, napkin calculating on a, you know, each each tank, but uh, 14 to almost 20. Yeah. 19 yeah. point eight or something. That's actually That's pretty, pretty good. good. Kansas was a low point because of the, uh, the wind was so heavy coming across yes, there. It was, I actually, I took a picture. I had the wheel turned maybe to like almost 11 o'clock. Yep. Oh my God, um, just to go straight. It was blowing so hard. It was, that was just to keep myself in the lane. Uh, steering, uh-huh. you know, like I was trying to drift. I just kept steering against the, it was, it was crazy. The, the last episode that we, we had different guests on, uh, we had uh, the couple from Dust to Glory and they drove from British Columbia all the way down to Tierra del Fuego and their 1990 Tacoma, or it wasn't a Tacoma, 1990 Toyota pickup. Yeah. Pre-Tacoma. Um, but they were talking about like the high winds of South America and having to drive. And then I was like, I love driving across Kansas watching all the RVs be tilted. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> when you start to see like yeah, wheels yeah. start to almost lift. It's you're terrifying. Just like, That's every like time I go by a semi truck, I would get in there like baffle in between. Yeah. Them, you know, and then if you clear them, it picks up again. Like yeah. it just ugh. like going through a tunnel in the rain and then you come back out. Yeah. That was crazy. But yeah, the, the, the weight is going to be interesting. So Mo- Motor Trend has an estimate up here of 39.50 to 44.50. Which is right in line with Wrangler. Isn't two-door well, Wrangler 38? Yeah, so I will say like the, the, the doors and top, <laughs> the panels and, the, and the, like the clamshell in the back were lighter than I expected. And probably mm-hmm. I haven't picked up all the JL stuff. It's definitely lighter than the JK stuff. Like clearly I had just taken my freedom freedom panels out from the front mm. the day before and I picked up the hard top panels on the Jeep and they were mm. one hand just light. Interesting. Yeah, so the doors were pretty light. Interesting. Uh, a 2020 Sport is about 4,200 and a Rubicon's about 4,500. Unlimited? Or? Unlimited. Okay. Unlimited. So, so be- yeah, so they're right in line. <laughs> yeah. and presumably the diesel's going to be heavier, but... Or the Jeep. A Sasquatch on yeah. 35s is probably going to be heavy too. Pretty heavy, yeah. It's a lot of tire. It's a fucked up. It tire. is. It is cool looking though. It's definitely something I researching some of this. Something I didn't realize is how many pieces of the Jeep are aluminum now. A lot really? more for the JL. What is? I know the hood is. A fenders maybe. Doors. Uh, doors are. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, uh, rear swing gate also <clears throat> is, but the yep. for the Bronco the rear swing gate. Outside and internals are all aluminum for the Bronco. The Bronco rear swing gate was massive on the two door. I, I opened it and width wise, like the opening is. With, yeah, with yeah, really? it was felt massive. Like the amount of time it took me to go, you know. <laughs> I'm wearing for pants. the audio listeners, Will just went across the room trying to <laughs> yeah. swing it open. <laughs> I didn't remember to wear the pants. visual was amazing. <laughs> Ooh, at least he had uh, pants. But on. it took it took a while to get it all the way out. Really, it was interesting. You kind of have to wonder if some of the if they go super lightweight on some of this stuff, are they going to have some issues like the F one fifty had, or like mm-hmm. is there going to be some like durability issues, especially right. when you get off road, if the thing is going to bend or flex or you know, or like is there going to have to be some kind of reinforcement for the tire carrier? Right. Yeah, especially with those big thirty. I remember cars. my dad had a. I grew up around Jeeps, and my dad had a YJ on thirty threes, and, and the back door would on the highway if you hit a bump the back door bounce open and then <laughs> bounce closed and then then it would like go off its you know adjustment and it would have to just slam shut but it was like that's what happens when you put you know a big tire on a big time, big flimsy end. piece of metal mm-hmm. yeah everyone's it, talking about like the bronco aftermarket like is it going to be nearly as good as the jeep I, i'd say probably i bet it's already happening Ford's already offering a bunch of stuff. I was impressed with the right. number of things that Ford's offering that I've seen in like Jeep catalogs. You know, like even just the silly thing up on the dash that has the slider, you can put the your Brilliant. mount and the GoPro and they're like, I really, I freaking love that. Like having done, yeah. you know, having, I had to buy an aftermarket. I took my, the, the grab handle on the passenger seat off of the, off of my JK mm-hmm. and you fit something over the hole and the screws go back through it. And it's literally mounted to the actual, 
grab handle at that point. The, you know, I tried vent clips and different types of other things. The, the windshield's so vertical that it's hard to find a stick on and the, you know, that's not 10 yards away from mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, so that's cool that they just built that little frame across there. It's a good idea. Didn't Toyota at one point on the Tacoma have like a, uh, a, a GoPro mount. the GoPro mount yeah, on the TRD it static, Pro? It was a static. You couldn't slide it, but it was mm-hmm. a static uh, GoPro mount on the TRD. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely a good idea. And I, I like how they have all the modular stuff where, mm-hmm. you know, quote unquote, if it has exposed bolts, it's easy to modify and accessorize. Um, I just, I don't know if it'll be as, as expensive as the Wranglers aftermarket catalog, just because it's taken so long to build that up to the point it is. I have seen a Photoshop of a Bronco with angry eyes. You know, oh God. No. Really? Oh yeah. my God. It wasn't oh, a real I product. It was that. just a, somebody screwing around and I, that would be a good, might be a good Hooniverse article. Like how long until the Bronco has angry eyes, you know, oh, so no. soon. I had an a, a, a article on a oversteer a auto trader that was, why are there so many angry Jeeps? Because I just, as a Jeep owner, couldn't stand every time I saw one. I just got like, yes. annoyed. I was fucking terrible. I hate it. As a former Jeep owner, I fucking hate them. <laughs> like, it's terrible. It's <clears throat> so many. The issue is that there's so many mods and they're so cheap. People just keep buying shit. Like my friend in Texas has like done a ton of stuff to his JL Rubicon already. And just like little stuff. Like, cause it's so inexp- coming from like performance cars, yeah. like, exhaust is you know 800 800 bucks or more you know what i mean and like yep. mm-hmm. I don't know how much it is wheels are x from x amount tires are x amount and then you look at the jeep stuff and you're like wow that's like you know 30 percent of the like performance car type right stuff it's yeah I, there's so probably like, so many factors behind that but i think one of them is just volume volume it's pretty basic it's not exotic materials or anything like i I added a fuel tank skid plate myself to the TJ. I had a steering box skid plate. Like yeah, they just so much bolted stuff. right on. Like yeah. how many, yeah. How many things you either just bolt into existing opening or you just pop some bolts off and put this thing on and bolt yeah. it back together. It like a crazy. Yeah. I did not have any red no. toe hooks though. <laughs> <laughs> Ross doesn't like red toe hooks. Well, <laughs> Not a huge fan. I mean, I don't like factory red tow hooks. Okay. No, especially <laughs> on, like a, on like a base renegade. <laughs> yeah, because they don't ex- – yeah, it, uh, well, we don't need to go over this again. Um, Something I picked up that I I think we were off a little bit in our previous prognostications that we were talking about Bronco Sport being a renegade fighter. And it's bigger. It's more I, like an escape – Almost. Well, I think it's yeah. they're leaning it more at Cherokee. More Cherokee. Uh, the, yeah, the pictures we saw at first, I think, I don't know if it was like a resolution thing, but they it, they made it look smaller than it actually seems to be. And yeah. if it's escape size, then it's Cherokee size. My, think, uh, my four dealer friend did say that they have no reservations on the Bronco Sport as of... <laughs> <laughs> None? Wow. Where like he couldn't... You know, he took the, um, so three factors for regular Bronco reservation. I can't remember if I put this into an article or not. Uh, F-150 sales for the mm-hmm. dealership. Mustang sales, which he wasn't sure why. Like maybe like iconic brand name. Each vehicle. Uh, yeah. And Jeep Wrangler reser- or, um, registration. Um, reg- registration in the county. Yeah. 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 I, I know you put this in the Slack, if nothing else, because Camille yeah. was like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Right, yeah. He was like, I'm not, I'm not going to get one yet. Yeah. I, I think I have the best shot at it then. You probably do out of all of us. Because literally F-150s are made down the street, so they're sold everywhere around here. Yeah. Mustangs are everywhere, and yeah. Jeeps are everywhere. Like it, I had a Mustang rental car last time I was out there. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> it was still snow on the ground, so they were like, nobody wants those if you want that one. I was like, yeah. like yes, that's um, the one. <laughs> yes, I would. Which tires are on it real fast? Just one of yeah. them? <laughs> <laughs> full insurance, please. <laughs> yes, exactly. When I wrap it around a full yeah. hey, one of my tires. One of my automotive friends here in town, I think he has a 12 Mustang or a 13. Well, he slaps them on all four, but he throws winter tires on it and then just has a blast. Like, Just like Ross, this this huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, I agree. It is fun. Rear wheel drive, as long as you're not, you know, high centering yourself on a snowbank, you're fine. 
snow tires actually give you some modicum of control. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Speaking of, I, I've seen a few renegades around town now on like the Falcons and on like KO twos, and you know it's only a matter of time before Bronco Sports on you know like KO twos or or something comparable. I told my I told my my dealer friend I said they're gonna sell to the people who didn't come in looking for one, but that maybe we're looking at an escape or a crossover. Yes. Or, mm-hmm. hmm, that looks a little like beefier. That's kind of cool looking and right. it's more manly. Next to the, part next to the big Bronco and they're like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Call it a Bronco. People, people yeah. are going to go in to look at the Bronco four door and buy the Bronco sport. Just based on cost. Do you think cost and like amenities and what they, yeah. you what know, can need. afford and what they actually are going to use it for. What they, I don't know. Do people buy things based on what they need? I guess they do all the time, which is why there's so many boring cars. All of the people that aren't in the automotive community. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they, Normal, they do buyers. Normal buyers. Normal buyers. <laughs> No, we are not. Um, no, no, but we are the only. I, I just, I can't get over the fucking the Land Rover Freelander comparison C to D pillar thing going on in the Bronco Sport with that like weird little angled thing, like yeah. chops it in, into triangles. It's weird. I feel like there have been Land Rover or Range Rover hints in Ford products for a while since they. Or the platform. same company. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the latest edge that's out now, like if you if you look at the, the hood on the front, it looks like very similar to like a, an Evoke hood, the way the line was down the yeah. side. Yeah, I, mean, uh, yeah. I finally got my wife to admit that the Explorer looks like a Range Rover and it looked that way first. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> it did. And it's a good design. It still works. We're like, yeah. Like 10 so years on for that I, style. I have a, I'm starting to have a thing for the, the Explorer ST. My boss bought one. Really? Uh, he bought a Raptor and an ST the same day. Um, where his wife drives the ST and he drives the Raptor. And it's a good looking car. Do we need, are. It, when you get in your wife's car and it's an Explorer ST, like you're yeah. going to have as much fun. That's still still pretty solid, yeah. Yeah. They are. They are. Especially if it's – that's. Do we, do we establish that's the 3.5? Yeah, well, uh, pretty sure. Yeah, which is mm-hmm. essentially a version of what's in the Raptor, right? <clears throat> Effectively, twin turbo V6. Yeah, it's four hundred horsepower. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. I, I, I haven't driven it yet, um, <laughs> but I, I plan to. Here, here guess, we're giving the Wrangler a hard time about getting to zero to sixty in five seconds. It gets to zero to sixty in five point two seconds. That's Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't have a solid front axle. That's true. Um, yeah, that's, it actually yeah. shares the underpinnings with a Taurus. Yeah, it's not yeah. Shaped, shaped like a brick in high center of gravity. I guess the closest thing you could get to that is like a Durango RT or a Durango SRT. Yeah, I've driven both. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of both. I've heard good things about them, actually. I'm both, I mean, a friend, friend of ours in Kentucky has a, has an RT, so I drove it when I was out there. And I drove the SRT on a press thing. And we did, like, launch control on the SRT with, like, a bunch of – I had, like, mm-hmm. uh, Will Kitten and a couple other, like, guys from – I knew from, like – DC area journalists and they were in the back like <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't uh it wasn't like the uh the track hawk track that, hawk. Was, that was certifiably scary I think we got a couple of video reactions of them in the backseat actually looking uncomfortable just like hey. <laughs> it's just pin the brake pin the gas just go it was yeah terrifying. does it have a does it have a button uh, it was a launch control button, just yeah. like all the other. Wow. I just, I just love yeah. being able to push to, to activate the button. That's fun, yeah. right? <laughs> no, that's, that's fun. Yeah. So will the uh, will the Jeep with the 392 have a have a launch control button? <laughs> it's too bad that Lamborghini got to the like fighter jet style like flip up flip thing up, flip up and... first because <laughs> that would have been what FCA would have done for launch oh, control yeah. if Lambo hadn't done it. Yeah, it would have been you need, perfect. You need for something like up on the up top where you flip a bunch of switches <laughs> to like start priming things. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It starts like whirring and like T handle <laughs> to pull out and twist and push back in. <laughs> oh my god, that would be so good. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Oh man, that, that, that T like handle a, lowered the suspension. That would be amazing. Or something like a bolt rifle where you have to like that's how you put it in gear. Like right. <laughs> I mean, they just did. Oh uh, god, help like support the troops version or something. <laughs> FCA did like within the last month, so we're we're only like one iteration away from that. Yeah. Um, but speaking of weird uh, controls and buttons and switches, did you guys see how you on a, 
I can't remember if it's standard on the Bronco or a special pack. No, it's a special package on the Bronco. It has the switches to choose four wheel drive, like two, four high, four low, and then like lockers up top on the top of the center stack. Like then there's the goat mode controller down, down, on, down on the, you know, on the tunnel. Yeah. But it has the actual like switches up top. The one I was in, it had all that at the bottom. But um, they kept telling us over and over it was a pre-production version and the interior wasn't 100%. Mm -hmm. um, so it had the rotary dial for the different off-road modes and the locker and everything was down on the in the middle. Okay. So that, that's interesting to see if that's what it looks like when it's... This thing had been like beat to hell on the inside. Like it was... If you see some of the pictures, the the material on the seats was pretty worn. Like the steering wheel looked like it came off of like a 87 Taurus or something. It was... Oh boy. It was, it had that like shiny, Rough. sort of shiny look to it that it had just been white, but it was that old sort of vinyl look to it. It was definitely, they were, they said, please use the pictures from the website or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'm, I'm having a hard time finding stuff uh, to get a better look at that. So I'm actually going to end up going to Ford Media. <laughs> oh boy. I'm the... trying to find Will's article right now. There we go. Um, okay. Just looking at so well, I'm just looking at the article you posted. Yep. Um, head on, the mirror integration into the windshield cowl is my favorite thing about the Bronco. I'm opening it up now. It's brilliant. The fact that you don't have to relocate the mirrors when you take the doors off is, I can't believe Jeep didn't think of that like years ago. Years ago. Yeah, yeah. Not, like I'm surprised yeah. that's not something they were able to do on the JK. That is. Uh, yeah, I've got these ghetto amazing. little like bolt-on mirrors that I use when I take the doors off, and I hate them. Because if you drive on the highway after a while, they just sort of start folding in. Yep. <laughs> I like the, uh, if you look at the rear view, I like the way they integrated the speakers into the, into the top. Okay. Into uh, the roll bar. If you look at the back with the Goodyear, Goodyear picture, you can see <laughs> the, black, the black area on either side are speakers. And it kept them from doing the, the bar across the middle like Jeep has. Mm -hmm. the, they call it the sport bar with the yep. speakers in it. Smart. Um, yeah, look at the look at the picture of the hatch open or the the rear the rear gate open. You can't quite get the scale of that, but that's I'd say it's three or four inches wider than the one on my Wrangler. Hmm. Oh yeah, it almost goes huge full width to like the detents on the inside of the fenders where I mean presumably is like meant for suspension and tires to live. Yeah. That is very wide. And there's been a lot of discussion um, about whether the doors or top would fit in the back there. The two door. Yeah, I would say in the two door. I mean, theoretically, but I thought I saw images that showed them stacked in the trunk. Definitely the four door. Okay. I don't just, think there's been a definitive. To, just looking at that floor area right there. I don't unless you stood them up like you, like pushed them against the back seat. Maybe you might get them there. Like. Um, the video I have on a pickup truck, pickup truck and SUV talk um, has some pictures, has some images of the, the doors, like a video in the beginning of just like they're sitting up against the truck there, the transit truck. Uh, but it's, it's tough to see how they would fit in the back. They're definitely, they don't seem to have like a little, you know, indent or a place to like sit them again. But this was a, a pre-production interior that was beat to crap. Right. It, it looks it looks rough. <laughs> this thing looks like it was thrashed. It's very scraped up, and this was the one that was on like the Today Show and CBS this morning or whatever. Mm -hmm. How the hell we got in DC? I'm, I'm, we're still not sure. The Ford rep was like, I don't know. I just you know they just agreed to drop it off in DC for the afternoon. It was sitting in a marina with a bunch of kids coming in from like um, completely non social distance boat racing. You know. Like, um, <laughs> A bunch of rich kids with like learning how to yacht here or, or sail or whatever. Um, a couple of them were like, "Is that the new Bronco?" We were like, "Yep." There's just like random people walking by, just pointing at it. Going, uh, yeah. Usually, one of these events, you think it's been a press events, probably where like it's pretty closed off. Like you have your mm -hmm. own space. This was parked in the parking lot of a marina, and <laughs> literally just, I'd say probably near a hundred people walked by coming from the water. Wow. Oh yeah, I see the. Uh... The nice enclosed gooseneck trailer that they probably towed it in. in. Yeah, if you see the, the guy sitting there, he was, uh, he kind of pretended like he knew enough about it. And, and they told us a tech wouldn't be there, but I kept asking him questions about, uh, about it. And 
he gave me kind of like his best guess on like things. <laughs> I was like, how much do the doors weigh? He's like, I don't know, 30 pounds. I was like, <laughs> just making 30. numbers up. Yeah, I was like, probably not 30, but because the Wrangler doors are 40 to 70 between like front and back. Mm -hmm. So again, that's one of those things that like Ford probably, you know. Benchmark, yeah. Yeah, benchmark and said we're going to go lighter. Did you, when you sat in it, did you, was it noticeable that there wasn't a bar kind of behind you direct, yeah. like in your Jeep? No, because if you lean your head as far up as you can in my Jeep, you still can't see the bar because it's behind you. But right, it's far enough behind your head yeah. that it's totally out of the way. So I would say for the back passengers, you probably get a pretty good like, wow, big open air, you know? Yeah. You don't get that sport bar with the speakers. You have to wonder and like, you know, roll over or whatever. Is it is it better to have that bar? It seems like it's mm. like a good like torsion with the, the sides, but um, I think that's I assume, that's why the I think the um, crash structure up top is boron steel because mm. they wanted to, to make keep up that for it. open, but yet yeah. at the same time wanted to make sure that it's definitely, it's definitely neat. As a if you're the only one driving it, though, I don't think you'd ever notice. Like, like, like is that a sales gimmick? To just say we have this and Jeep doesn't. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, maybe just full, full panoramic open, whatever. Yeah. Okay, important thing, though. How are the seats? Probably not production seats, but how are the seats? Um, yeah, they were, they, were, they were fine. They were Ford seats. Yeah, just too basic. I, I don't, I, my guess is based on the, uh, the finish of them, they were just some like leftover stuff they had kind of sitting around. They weren't <laughs> particularly, it was, a, it, was a, it was probably just made for durability, just for like the test vehicle or whatever. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, kind of hard to evaluate it just felt, yeah. it felt very, very wide though like the looks it it felt sitting in it when i got back in my jeep um and having spent two weeks in mine like my 16 year old was sort of like here you know i felt like you know this is where the passenger seat is and on the the bronco it's like oh it's over there like it just felt <laughs> considerably wide. interesting that's like, like the difference of my wife and i if we ever drive the Land Cruiser together. Yeah. Like this used to be a full size SUV and she's just right there. But like when we get into yeah. the Sequoia, it's like a day and a half away. I mean like, Hey, mm -hmm. yeah. hey, what's going on? Where, where do you, do yeah, you need to stop? Yeah. yeah. The center console is huge in the Sequoia. Yeah. It's a big truck. It's like 14 inches. Um, I do think the one that I saw, if you look at the dash where between like the screen and the gauges, that felt really similar to the pictures that I saw looking for like a good picture yeah there's a couple um like the way that the style of the okay the basic shape of the dash the grab handles where the screen is the buttons along there the shifter all that felt like very similar to like what was in the the pictures you know the press pictures so, yeah. so that's the small screen i'm guessing they didn't have it available for you to no, like I think turn like on eight, eight and a 12 i believe or the, but that eight, looks more but, than sufficient Am I wrong? I, yeah, I mean, I have a 2017 Wrangler, and I just tiny screen. It's, it's yeah, touch screen at least, but it's not anything special. Like I don't even have a backup camera to tell, you know. Like it's, that's the it's, it's small screen. Connect. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You can very good, but like, yeah. I don't know. The small screen in this is still way bigger than the small. Even that's like almost the size of the big screen, like the big you connect screen in the jail. Probably. Yeah. It looks like the that grab handle by the passenger side looks really well thought out for helping cool. anyone like, I mean, get in. Yeah. The Wrangler has one from basically where that starts over to where that vent is on the left. Right. So if you really in some like off-road stuff, you got like a pretty good two hands in front of you grabbing onto it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, like I'm curious if this will be as good from like a pistol grip design standpoint. It looks well, really mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> like it looks, right, right. it looks really, really, really neat. I, I just liked the I just like the way it looks. Well, Didn't we also there's the see pistol grip one there and then like down by the center console there's like yeah. a, almost like a triangle like a a, a a diagonal pistol grip. There's there. supposed to be another one over there. I don't and see so it in these pictures, but that's I think one of the rare. things they're touting as like an yeah. uh, you know, if it has exposed bolts you can un unscrew it and bolt as an accessory in. Yeah. yeah. When you go on the media site, it's the the one by the center console still there. Okay. This thing is beat to shit. I'm just like yeah. looking at it. 
Yeah, no, they were they were asking us very nicely not to post as, too many pictures of it or talk about it, of, of which I've done both at this point. <laughs> 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 got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Did the did the pre-pro one you looked at? Did it have all the the switches above the the rear view mirror? No, I don't think so. There's, there looks like there's six switches located up there and on the media site. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and download this one. <laughs> if I'm going to talk about it, I might as well put it out there for people. Hmm. And it, this one looks like it has a huge ass screen. Oh yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm looking through my full set of pictures here. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to go back through and download when I when I edit the episode. I'm gonna have to think about. I'm just gonna sit here with the media insight and say, "What did we talk about that wasn't included in Will's pictures?" And I'll go right. get it over here. Like the doors oh, no. that have the opening in them. Yeah. The doors that have the opening in them, Jeep did first. They oh, didn't yeah, really produce it, but they did that when the now, JL debuted. Is it a full opening or is it a panel, like it's a clear a panel? panel. That's just a clear panel. Like a, like, so, a, like a like a Senna. Senna. Yeah. Which is funny that we're comparing those two. <laughs> to a McLaren supercar. Yeah. <laughs> the the JL that they debuted that on probably costs about as much as the door of the Senna. Yeah. Well, there's a guy who drives a Senna around here and uh post COVID I've I've seen him out a ton. What? Driving around. Yeah. I still haven't seen one. It's, I, haven't, I haven't seen one in person. I've seen it's so like purpose built that it's like if you look at it objectively, it's like it's kind of ugly. But if you look at it like from a, just a pure performance standpoint, like every little thing has a purpose. Mm -hmm. it's a wild car to see in person. I bet. Yeah, I'm. I have like a bunch of exotic car dealers near here. I gotta try to poke over and see if they have one. Pretty cool. Miller Motor Cars must have one. Oh yeah, I've heard of them. I'm trying to think of if I had any other questions. It's weird. Bronco has been so obsessively covered. Like, what was the last vehicle that got this much coverage? Supra. Supra, or in our circle, everyone shitting on Cybertruck after it came out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Publicly, like widespread media coverage I think not just media coverage that goes beyond just like us and our circles yeah, our weird like little the, world like the like you could ask someone off the street hey have you seen the new bronco and most people would go oh yeah i saw it because it was mm -hmm. it's on morning shows it's on the you know it's on right cnn.com my like, wife's oh, parents we were there i guess yeah last night and they were like yeah we were watching the news yesterday and we saw the bronco i was like yeah like on cnn yeah yeah pretty much Weird. I know that we talked about uh, my local sports radio station talked about it because it was scheduled to de debut on OJ's birthday. And so of course the yeah, sports right. guys went, wait, what? Yeah. And they had a big ESPN three minute video or something. I didn't right. watch it, but it was part of the press release. It was probably just the same three minute video. That was the start of the YouTube video. Probably. Yeah. Which, got to say, at the end of the 11 minutes, I was totally expecting there to be, like, a guy on a stage talking about it. I was, like, looking around, like, uh, so that's it? It's over? Like, that's it. there's no full, like, press thing? Just this I will say this is the most I've spent time looking, like, when we got the embargo <clears throat> up on Monday, that was the most time I've spent looking through material that I wasn't being tasked with an article or something. It was just out of personal, like, okay, I need to see this. I need to mm -hmm. look need to look at as many details and pictures and the things yeah. that I actually want to see. Seriously. And also thank you for sending that to me when I asked for it because it was, no it broke up my <laughs> otherwise terrible Monday. So right. if the Ford rep is watching was not shared beyond, uh, beyond our in inner circle. <laughs> no, I think <laughs> Jeff had stuff that he was scared to put in Slack. <laughs> yeah. It's like, just in case, let's just stop there with this. There's a so not only is there that that slide bar on the dash, there's a USB port up there to power your. Oh, that's cool. So you don't. Have to oh, really? Your, yeah, I just. Yeah, that was the other issue. Other reason I didn't put my phone on a window mount, so I didn't want the cord going all the way down to where the because it goes in the the mm -hmm. USB is in the center console for the uh, mm -hmm. to connect to the UConnect. So yeah, because just, GoPros last about twenty five minutes and then. Right, yeah, best case, yeah. 
you can keep them charged. That's ideal. I wonder. I'm, I'm assuming there's two, two out there on their phone and yeah. right. camera. Yeah, that would make sense. So I guess the ultimate question here for you, Will, before we wrap this thing up and yeah. don't talk about Bronco again until probably reviews come out. Yeah. Um, so as you said at the beginning, you're still ordering stuff for the JK, but inexpensive stuff. Inexpensive. Yeah, even yeah. so, but, yeah. but still stuff. Um, yeah. So it hasn't completely like put a pause on doing anything to the Jeep, but do you think that, yourself and others like you are going to be swayed away from Jeep and away from the Jeep brand and everything the Wrangler, you know, calls its own territory by this, or is this just going to be like the Ford, you know, the Ford fanboys who otherwise wouldn't have bought something like this. Essentially the FJ where like yeah, people yeah. bought it, but it wasn't like a, it didn't, you know, take over. Mm -hmm. um, enough of a percentage that I think FCA is going to have an impact. And if you look at the Jeep brand from a large perspective of their like sales, like that's that's going to that's going to hurt. They sell a lot of Wranglers. Um, yeah, like aren't they selling like two hundred thousand a year now? Uh, I haven't looked on like good car, bad car recently, but like they're you know I try to keep an eye on some of those. It's it's higher than I expected. And just the number of ones that I see around here, you know, we got a we got a Jeep Wave, you know, but you like you don't notice it, especially until you own one, how many there are and they're mm -hmm. everywhere. So I'd say yes, you're gonna have some hardcore people. Like my friend with the, the JL out in Texas, when I sent it to him, he's like, no, nah, I'm not interested. And that night he was like, well, I'm building one online. Maybe I'll check it out. Like, <laughs> and it was, he's not like a long-term Jeep guy, but he when he bit, he bit hard. And now he's, he's all in with the lift kit and the big tires. And like, mm -hmm. he's definitely, you know, um, so you're going to get some like long-term Jeep buyers who were like, never, ever, ever will I. We're going to get some like him that are like, they they're, they drank the Kool-Aid. They're kind of in mm -hmm. sort of close to that, but not, I'm also kind of a long-term Ford guy. Like I've had Mustangs. Six as we know. Mustangs and, you know, six Mustangs. Yeah. I've had six Mustangs. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 93, 203s, 10, 11. Why don't you have 203s? Uh, I bought one new in 03 and I bought one again like a few years ago. Just oh, wow. Uh, like what you like. Like, yeah, it was inexpensive, just like screw around car. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not 100% sold, um, but that's mostly just the logistics of I've got a three year old Jeep. If he came back and said, we'll pay off your loan at 26, whatever, you know, and I could free and clear just buy a Bronco and probably have a similar car payment probably consider it. I think you're going to have a lot of people who are in that same scenario of considering where they're at on their Jeep and whether they can afford to switch it out. And right. then I think you're going to, I think you're going to get my long-term prediction is you're going to see at least like 20, 30% changeover mm -hmm. in the next like two years. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get a bunch of other people who just, that's their first off-roader. Like I just happened to buy a Wrangler back in 2012 because we had a Miata and it was too small and, you know, switched into something bigger right. that was also a convertible. My wife liked it. It was like, all right, that's cool. Drove that and just drove that cross country and just kind of like, kind of like enjoyed it. And then a few years ago when our uh, Yukon threw a rod, uh, I was like, well, I literally have to replace this in the next two days or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, sat, it sat at the GMC dealer who, owned a Jeep dealer down the street. And I was like, eh, I can maybe trade it over there instead. Right. Um, so yeah, long story short, gotcha. you're going to see enough of a changeover to hurt. Cause I mean, like we started this off, like the more you look at it, it's like, it's pretty good. Like specs yeah. are good. The, yeah. the add-ons that you can get from Jeep are good. Like whether, whether or not you get the big aftermarket is almost like a moot point. If Jeep can move a bunch of, I mean, you got a bunch of Mopar crap you can buy for a Jeep, but people go to Quadratech and Extreme, you know, like, you know. All over the place, yeah. So many different places you can buy Jeep off-road stuff that you don't need to buy the Mopar things that are usually way more expensive. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see how Ford handles that. Do they do a, a big business on their own aftermarket Ford stuff? Mm -hmm. you know? Ford Performance, Ford Race, you yeah, know, all that I mean, stuff. I guarantee you the same companies that make Jeep stuff are now mm -hmm. looking at making Bronco stuff because why wouldn't why not? Of know? course. 
same idea. Capitalize on the same market, but yeah, in a different way. Different mold on a different product. It's the same engineered the same way, you know? Um, just to follow up. So in 2010, Jeep sold 94,000 Wranglers. So, okay. So um, I'm trying to, let's just, 2005 is the first year that good car, bad car has for the Wrangler. They sold 79,000. Last year, they sold 228,000 Wranglers. That's a lot. That's a big market. That's a lot more than some cars that we consider like relatively successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you feel like you see a lot of them. It's like right? 50 numbers, but it's, that's getting into like. Accords. Mainstream. Yeah. Like Accords are like two, three 300,000, aren't they? Like, maybe it's uh, more than that, but that's, that's, sure. a, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of vehicles. Yeah. Especially for something that is so basically utilitarian and primitive compared to like all the other shit on sale. Almost any other crossover that you can buy. And maybe that's, yeah. that's why it sold so well. You touched on this briefly and what you were just saying about the crossover buyers, like, yeah. and cr I mean, crossover between Bronco and Jeep, not, not like crossover, like CEO crossovers. Buyers. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, like the Jeep is, the jail is extremely livable. The JK is really livable. JK is really livable. Yeah. It's, the things I don't like about my JK were almost all fixed in the JL. So, okay. you know, again, I bought a car in the last year that it was made, just like the Mustang, <laughs> right? just like that generation Mustang I bought and they swapped it out. But that was more of a factor of, mm -hmm. you know, the Yukon's dead when you need a new car. Um, right. So oh my God. Honda only sold 20,000, no, 40,000 more Accords than Jeep sold Wranglers okay. last year. I figured Accord was probably in that same 200 and some range. 267, Jeep yeah. sold 228. Like that's yeah. crazy. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to think. What what else? What is I, I think between I think we just need to go drive one now. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. Did okay, so last final thing. Did they say anything about time frame for like no, I, I've asked about other press events. Um because Camille was bugging me about having one up in, in Boston. Um I think you're gonna start to see more of these like preview events where you, they're like sitting out in a in a parking lot or field or something and you can kind of poke at them mm -hmm. um but i think we're a little ways away from the like line them up and drive them events what are we now i i bet it's this calendar year but i think we're probably a little it's gonna be a little bit before we can mm -hmm. actually and production presumably for like they're next gonna have spring to have, yeah they're gonna have to have production ready vehicles that are representative or I mean, like the first Supra I drove, Supra I drove, and the first LC five hundred I drove were all both like pre production, but they were like you couldn't tell really tell the difference if you took a picture of, you know, whereas right. this was. So I think once they get those ready, maybe we'll get a chance behind the wheel and right. you know, if we're allowed, so. to to, allowed to go to driving events at that point. <laughs> <laughs> the day will come. Yeah. So it's it's going to be built in Wayne, Michigan. So I bet. I bet they get that turned around real quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not much else going on up there right now. Well, and um, since it's based off Ranger, it's it's oh, probably just going to be like a sister line right next to it kind of thing. Yep. Which is, that's why, again, why it's frustrating that they won't offer an optional manual transmission because that's just a checkbox that the, the assembly line doesn't care. No. It's just no. whatever different button you press in. Yeah. Right. Oops, they spat out a manual ranger. Oops. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to be mad. No. So. Sweet. Yeah, I yeah. think. I think thanks, thanks, thanks for coming on. Squeezing this one in. <laughs> <laughs> this is like late notice. <sighs> sure. So we'll have to have you back on to talk about the, uh, the JK adventure that you went on. Yeah, that'd be fun. I uh, know you guys are into overlanding. Like I went to the Overland East uh, this past fall, first time. Cool. And um, it was overwhelming enough to get into it, but also overwhelmed by it. And so, um, Jeff was trying to link me up with somebody to get a, a rooftop tent for this trip, but didn't, did pan out. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if the JK sticks around, that's probably the next step is looking at, cool. I've already been looking at different, the thing I learned from that the most, which we can talk about at a later date was just being able to store things better inside yeah. so everything wasn't sitting in bins or like on in bags on the floor. So getting some like cargo bags up on the sides or a, a trailer or a, uh, a rack to go over the, the uh, spare tire, just mm -hmm. to get some of the stuff out of it. Like I even had like a six gallon thing of water. If I could mount that on the outside, then 
right. all the things sloshing around the inside. So yeah, happy to talk about a sort of a new, Hell yeah. newcomer's uh, feelings about getting into that. Let's do it. Sweet. We're always all right. happy to talk four wheeling. Sure. So right. cool. See you guys. All right. Plug your shit, Will. Oh, geez. Uh, Universe, I think you guys have heard of that. Uh, yeah. Rightfootdown.com. Yeah. Right uh, was contributing to Auto Trader for a little while. Um, pickup truck and SUV talk. I'll probably do a little bit over there. Uh, talked to Tim, and uh, he uh, helped me compile some, some of the video from this. And so, yeah, just uh, at William Bird, B Y R D USA, on all the different social media platforms, and can always use some followers. So, appreciate yep. it. Awesome. We're, we're there with you. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, man. All right. Awesome. All right. Later. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Should I end the – nope. Nope. I'm going to end the show the regular way. You can follow Ross at no, not like the one from Friends on Instagram. You can read his stuff on Hooniverse. You can read my stuff on Hooniverse. Ross also writes for Everyday Driver. I'm at Overlanding Dad on Twitter and Instagram, and that's our show. They all abandoned me in our video call by myself. <laughs> and Ross is sending me a note now saying that he was like, oh shit, should I not have left? You can rejoin, Ross. You can always rejoin. Thanks, guys. <laughs>